Well, it's funny because everybody has that one day that they'll always remember for the rest of their lives. Um, for me, um, like a lot of other people, uh, my story kind of started on September 11th uh, when the attacks in New York City happened. Um, I was a junior at IU Bloomington, so really uh, I was in an organic chemistry class in the basement of a really old building and I had no idea what was going on. And then I get home and my roommate's like, your mom has called like 57 times. And so I get to the house and I'm like, all right, let me call my mom back. I call her back and she's like, where have, are you? And I'm like, you know, I'm in school, you know. And I remember being like, mom, why are you freaking out? Cause she called me every day, but she was kind of a little excited. She was like, turn on the TV, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm fine. I'm a college kid, you know, at the time I kind of had a mohawk, so grown up a little bit since then. And so I turn on the TV and I'm like, wow, that's a tragedy. But I didn't really have an, uh, a real depth of how that was gonna affect me. So my mom worked for the airline. And so what happens when big companies take a big economic hit, they either lay off or they try to downsize. So my mom was offered a retirement package. Now that retirement package was, you know, for 32 years, was a pretty good retirement package. My mom decided that it was, it was pretty good, it was time to go. So she accepted the, the offer. A few months later, they announced they were reducing their medical benefits. Now for our family, that was a pretty big deal. See, back in 92, my mom had a breakdown. Now, for some families, that's not a big deal because my mom was pretty healthy. She took care of herself. So she only took one pill a day. One pill every single day. Unfortunately, that one pill managed her paranoid schizophrenia. And that one pill had maintained her health and her lifestyle for the last 20 years. Unfortunately, that one pill cost $749 a month. What do you do? Now my mom was a good mom, you know? We were, I was a Girl Scout, my brother was a Boy Scout, we were soccer kids and basketball kids. She was a good mom, and she didn't want to worry us, so she didn't say anything. So what my mom did is what any mom did. She made do. So what she did is she started spacing her medicine out. So that one pill that she was supposed to take every single day, she started taking every other day. And then every third day. And then half a pill every other day. And then eventually, her illness just kind of took over. So on May 25th, 2002, I got a call in Bloomington that I never thought I was going to get. I answered the phone, heard a voice I'd never heard before. Is this Raina Carter? I said, yes, sir. And he says, well, we need you to come to Indianapolis immediately. Your mom has gone missing. What do you want us to do with your little sister? My mom had adopted a little girl, and she had been raised as my little sister. She was 10 years younger than me. And I didn't know what exactly I was gonna do, but I knew that foster care sounded really bad. So I go racing up there, and I'm like, what am I supposed to do? I don't, I'm still raising myself. How am I supposed to raise this kid? And so he gives me this card. It had 2-1-1 on it. I'd never heard of 2-1-1, and I really didn't want a card. I wanted my mom back. So I took the card, and honestly, I threw it in a drawer somewhere and I was like, I don't want a card. This is not gonna help. So I did what any kid in my position was thought the right thing to do was. I started working. I was working, I was doing the two, three job shuffle, and then a couple months later, my little sister really started to fall apart. I didn't know what to do. So I found that card and I called 211. And then suddenly, I started getting all these phone calls from different organizations that were in the position to give us some help. Because I needed, really, I needed three things. I needed help from my little sister immediately. I needed help from myself because I had no idea what I was doing. And I needed to find my mom. So they got me in contact with a couple of therapy groups to help my little sister kind of get a handle on things, get me some support and kind of figure out. This really awesome group called Kids Voice came into my home and like took an evaluation of the things that I didn't know so I could give this child like a decent lifestyle. And then they got me in contact with the National Alliance for Mental Illness because I just didn't know anything about what was going on with my mom. So a couple of months passed, my little sister's starting to straighten out, which was awesome, because my heart was totally broken. So then I started to figure out, okay, this whole budgeting thing, all right, maybe I can feed this kid, keep her in school, I finished school, and about a year passed. And then I started to get involved in, okay, I really, I really need to figure out how to find my mom. 
And what I found out is that in the state of Indiana, it is not illegal to be completely out of your mind as long as you're not in imminent danger to yourself or someone else. So there's nothing legally I could do, even if I found her. So I got, uh, I got referred to legal aid. Legal aid told me, you gotta get into probate court. Another year passed. It's extremely difficult to get into probate court. So my sister's starting, she's starting high school, or she's really getting well into high school. I'm starting to figure out how to be an adult, how to figure it out. But then the more I started to do research on missing adults, what I found is that once an adult goes missing, you have less than 1% chance of getting that adult back. So by the time year three rolled around, I really gave up hope. And this is what I say is my United Way miracle. So after three and a half years of not seeing my mom, or hearing from this mom who did all these things to give us a great childhood, I was really kind of absolved with the idea that I was never gonna see her again. So then one day, on September 26th, I get this phone call from a voice I hadn't heard in three and a half years. And it was really simple. Raina, this is mom. Happy birthday. And the birthdays were a really big deal to us because my birthday was September 26th and hers was September 27th. And what had happened is that a volunteer had recognized her and she was actually a nurse and she knew my mom from when she was from her primary care physician and was like, no, I know her. And so she, that connection with my mom, she convinced my mom to go back to the hospital and convince her to get on her medication. She'd actually been in the hospital for about six weeks before she was able to get clarity enough to call me. And she said, things are still really cloudy, but I wasn't gonna miss another birthday. And so that was my United Way miracle. She called me on my 25th birthday, and I went to go see her the next day on her, uh, the see, I'm not gonna tell her age. I get, went to see her the next day on her birthday. I got three more years with my mom. She got to meet her first great-grandchild. She got to see me get married. She got to uh, meet her, fir her first great-great-grandson. She was just this awesome lady. And the thing was, is that we never thought that we were gonna need the, this help from all these different organizations. I would have never thought about being prepared as a, a Girl Scout was gonna be, be prepared for this. And what I found is that United Way a lot of times supports the organizations that you don't think you're gonna need until you actually need them. My mom was a champion. She was my champion and she made me feel like a champion every single day. So that's why I give to United Way. So now, when I look back at the 22-year-old me who had really had no idea what United Way was, it was this kind of abstract idea, I didn't know that if I had maybe given a dollar, or two dollars, or maybe five dollars to not go three and a half years without hearing my mom's voice, I would have gladly given up a soda. I would have gladly given up some junk food. Because it's important. That's why I do it.